Next I'm going to go over the VDS, the vehicle display system. There are two different screens that you'll see. One is the setting screens and the other one's the drive screens. First I'll start with the eye in the upper left hand corner. That's information. This is all kinds of different information you can find out about your car, including vehicle model. If you push that, it'll tell you your VIN number, uh, the vehicle model that you have. Fuel save, this is one of the only places you can actually make an adjustment in the information screens. So we could go in here and you could type in the a car that you have previously. Say if you got a car that got 31 miles per gallon or um, you, you know how much gasoline it was using, you could adjust those settings there and compare that and see how you're doing and, and the amount of oil that you're using. You can also read how it's calculated if you push the asterisk. I'll exit out of this one. Tires. Tire pressure is only available when the car is on. So I'll turn the car on. It reads the individual pressures, tire pressures in each tire as well as the temperature of the air inside of each tire. I'll exit out of here. Next there's service info. If you push that it will tell you how much further you can go until you need a service. I'll go on to the second screen and energy history. It will tell us the net energy used today, this month, how much you've regenerated with the regenerative braking for today as well as the month. And that's the info screen. I'll exit out of that. Lower left hand corner is the settings screen with the wrench. Push on that. We'll start with charging. There are three settings screens. Charging is probably the most in-depth one because there are so many features here. So we've got our different charging modes. So we're under modes right now. The car always defaults to standard mode. Standard mode charges the car 90% and only allows you to use the middle 80%. The bottom 10% is not accessible so it protects the life of the battery. Storage mode charges the car to about 50% and maintains it there. Range mode. So we've seen a, we see a warning that pops up here. This is basically telling us that if we continue to use range mode all the time which allows us to charge the car to 100% full and discharge the the battery 100%. That actually is bad for the batteries and will damage the battery. So if you repeatedly use that, it will reduce the life of the battery. And then there's performance mode. Same thing. If you use performance mode, it could damage the battery. And what performance mode does is it warms up the battery to about 40 degrees Celsius, which is the least allows the least amount of resistance so that the car is able to perform optimally. We'll set it back to standard mode. You can set the timing. This is basically when do you want the car to charge? Do you want it to charge on plug-in which it's set to right now? Or do you have a special rate for electricity where electricity is possibly cheaper at night? If you do, you can set it to a specific time. Right now it defaults to 5. I can make it to 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. So that when you ch plug the car in, it won't start charging until a certain time when you know electricity is going to be cheaper. I'll go back to charge on plug-in. Next I'll go to current. So this is if you were on the road and you were using the mobile charger, you could actually set the amps to match the amount of amps that's coming, that's being put through with the mobile charger. I'll restore the defaults on that back to 70. And then finally cost. You actually put in here how much it costs per kilowatt hour to see how much you're spending on electricity. I'll restore default to 10. Next clock. Pretty obvious. You can set the time of the car, what time it is. 24 hour clock. Then you've got drive screens. You can actually decide what you want to see on the drive screens and we'll show you what the drive screens look like in a little bit. Tire monitor. There's basically two different settings. There's the recommended, uh, the recommended limit, which is pumped to 30 psi front, 40 psi rear, and that's the maximum efficiency setting. 
Then there's also you can switch to the comfort setting which reduces the efficiency of the car but allows the car to ride a little bit more comfortably. I won't set it to that, I will exit. Exit out of that one. Go to the second set of screens. You can set a security pin so that you can actually lock the car. There's home link so you can add a garage door opener, you can add any other type of devices that would automatically turn something on in the house but most commonly it's used for the garage door opener. You've got the key fob right now, the third button on the key default is set to open the trunk. You can also use it to turn on the alarm in the car as well as set it for one of your home link settings say if you wanted it to be able to open or close a garage door. You can set the units if you want it metric or American. And the third set of screens here, you've got the touch screen settings. You can go through, adjust the brightness. You can set it for day, night, or auto settings where it'll actually measure if it's bright outside or dark outside. We'll leave it on auto. You can adjust the contrast if you want it to have more contrast or less. You got a touch calibration. So you can go through and make sure that your touches are as accurate as possible. And then one of the most important modes here is tow mode. Just in case you were ever in a situation where the car needed to be towed, you would have to go into the VDS, go to tow mode. Only flatbed towing is recommended, so do not have this attached to a tow truck that would actually pull the car because it may damage the car. So you would select OK, and that will actually disengage the parking paw that it is in the transmission that puts the car in park. So the car is on right now, so it's not allowing us to do that, but that's how you would get to it. Other things you can also access from the main screen here is valet mode, so you can punch in a code so it will limit what, the, what a valet would be able to do with the car. They can drive, it limits the car to 60 miles an hour, 30 miles, and also records the number of times somebody tries to open the trunk. Again, this is, you can adjust the brightness straight from this main screen, nighttime, automatic, or daytime, set to automatic. And this is where you can also access to locking the car. Now we're going to look at the drive screens. The only way you can see the drive screens is if the car is on and you take off the emergency brake. So this is the basic screen that most people look at. It shows you how much charge you have in the battery. These are some of the things that we've selected. So we want to see what's the temperature outside, what direction we're heading in, what's the date and time, what's the range of the car. Next drive screen shows you the energy usage. You can see it's quite a bit hilly and that's because it was put through, uh, just recently put through testing. This is a new car. So you can see it was accelerated very hard and stopped very hard several times. This is over a course of five miles. Next screen, you would be able to see this when you were driving, how much horsepower is being used, the uh, foot pounds of torque, and g-forces and acceleration. Next drive screen is just a general drive screen that just tells you the time so you can look down and see the time easily. And the final drive screen here shows you what's going on temperature wise with the motor, the power electronics module, and the battery. Push it one more time, we go back to the main drive screen. And if I pull the emergency brake, you see we go back to the settings screens.